Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. You are mighty God, mighty God. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. one another with these words. Amen. It's the place where we encourage one another with words. We comfort one another when we come together. The second step to spiritual restoration is humility. To start restoration process, we must first recognize that we are nothing before the Almighty. To bring ourselves down to prepare to humble ourselves. Habakkuk 2.20 It says, The Lord is in His holy place. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Spiritual restoration. We need to be humble spiritually. Amen. We need to be humble spiritually. For God to be able to lift us up. For God to be able to use us. Amen. Not to say, oh, if I'm not here, I thank God for the life of, I used to say it, I thank God for the life of, um, but I said, oh, I know if I'm not here, it's always like, I know nothing would, it's not, it's not going to say, oh, this is not my department, this is not this, I'm not trying to, because it's there, but that humbleness to say, I can do anything for God, to come into the house of God, to work for God, and it doesn't even have to be, how to be the house of God alone. Just to humble yourself spiritually and do that work of God. That's the second, that's the second stage to spiritual restoration. Humble yourself before God. Amen. Amen. Always think about how can we do this? How can we do this? How can we move the church of God forward? Amen. Amen. I was praying the last time before uh, Arami they came to join us. I think Mommy Blair was away on maternity and I'm like, okay, even if I'm not in church, I know that's what we always there. We need people in the house. And God gave me my usher, my ushering department, bone of my bone of the flesh of my flesh, I'll put it that way. Around me there and Mommy Blair, oh my God, I can't ask for, for more. Because I was thinking, always think, so what do we do? How do we move the world? If we ask any of us, now, when last have you thought about that? Well, what else can, you do, can we do to make things better? Not we are having summer party or barbecue. <laughs> the work of God, the actual work of God, to move the kingdom of God forward. When last have we called daddy? When last have we called mommy? When last have we called one of our brethren? Oh, that chair in Abuja, I see that some of it, are we allowed to change it? Oh, that red chair that we use. Do we still have more in the store? In the store? Can we bring more? Oh, if we have visitors, you know? How can we move the work of God forward? How can we move the kingdom of God forward? Have we ever asked anyone? Have we ever called daddy? Have we ever called mommy? Have we ever called any of our brethren? What can we do together? The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The third step to spiritual restoration is prayer. Hallelujah. The third step to spiritual restoration is prayer. It's not presenting, not prayer like presenting all our desire, this is what I want. No. God, how, pray for God. How do I do your work? Guide me. Help me. Prepare me for this work. I know I can't do it by my strength. I know I can't do it by my power. By committing everything to the hand of God. To pray for God to prepare us for this job. I can tell you, you might think, oh, okay, we've had the message, I want to carry on doing my... <laughs> You can't do it on your own, you'll be frustrated. That I can assure you 100%. You cannot do it by your power, you cannot do it by your mind. You will get frustrated. But if you ask, if you pray and ask for God to prepare you for that work, God to help you, God to guide you, prayer. Amen. Amen. The next step is repentance from sin. 
or anything that will make us sleep spiritually. Repentance from sin. From sin. It is very important to, to make that decision. Okay, I am going back. I am, and I gave you that example of Mommy Blair said that. I'm going back. I'm back now. I'm working for the. I'm doing the work of God. I remember Sister Victoria too, when she was praying. I said, Sister Victoria, when I went, every time she comes late, I harass her. I said, Look at the time. I said, It's about to be my time. After I finish, don't worry. I'll make sure. And she's been very good. I'm not watching you. Don't think she's watching. She's been very, very sad. I'm not worried. It's about to be my time. Hey, this God just helped me. This pregnancy, everything I'm going through. Yeah, as soon as I give that to my baby, oh my God, I will be consistent. I will ash and I'm just to put it in the in prayer. And God has been faithful in our life. Let us make those decisions. We all we always have New Year restoration by March or April is gone out of the window. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> Let's go back to our maker. Let's make those decisions. That's really sure. Let's begin to, to let's begin to be on fire for God again. Most of us here I know we are from Nigeria. We know how hot we are for God before we came into this country. I know sometimes because of the work we do and all that. But we work in Nigeria too. And I'll be honest, looking at it from our perspective as well. Sometimes when you come to church and it's all cold and you will gradually, gradually, gradually get into that. Everything will come cold as well. Spiritual restoration. Let us get back into the habits. Let us go back to being hot for God. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. If we make up our mind and put it here. First Peter 5 7. How we can just cast everything to him. Everything to him. Just depend on him. And when we know, we all know our strength. We learned it in Sunday school this morning. We know our strength, we know our weakness. That thing that you know is not going to help you or it's always making you pass light. Let's run away from it. Let's run away from it. That's why I don't like to miss Sunday school. Because I know that every time I come to that Sunday school, I learn, I learn a lot. And I know because the devil knows that. He will always look for a way to make me to come late. And it's the same thing. If the devil knows that when you log in, you are always blessed, he will look for something to make you not to be logging in again online. If he knows that when you come to church, oh, this one, he would be, he will be fired again for God. He will look for a way, he will look for a way. Not to make you to come to church again, not to make you to connect with the children of God again. Let us not be ignorant of the devices of the wicked. Let us go back this afternoon. Let us sit down. How was I five years ago? How was I ten years ago? Am I still on fire for God? And when last have I prayed and I can feel that, oh, I'm connected to heaven. When last have I done something that will move the kingdom of God forward? When last have I prayed? Have I praised God and I'm dancing and I'm feeling like David and I'm connecting to the throne and I can feel it? Let us go back to our maker. The first person, because of the business of our work, we, we talk about work and all of this. Let's create that time for God. Let's be on fire for God again. Leave everything for Him. If it's you when you are cooking, for me it works for me. When I'm cooking, there's some music you, you listen to, and from there, sometimes I even stop what I'm cooking and I'll go upstairs and start playing. There's some music you listen to, and it will just connect you to heaven. If that's what works for you, let's start it. If you know, oh, if I come to church, I feel I feel hot for God again. Let's try and start coming. Anything that works for you. Let's start again. That's spiritual restoration. We need it. Amen. Amen. And that Bible verse that we read, it said when men sleep, the enemy came. Amen. Don't let us, don't let us sleep. Don't let us sleep. We will not be caught on our way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Don't let us sleep.
don't let us sleep, sleep spiritually. Amen. Amen. Before I round up, let me quickly share this story for with us in the Bible. Nehemiah 4, 1 to 6. Let me finish from that. Nehemiah 4, 1 to 6. Please, if someone is there, let's read it powerfully. Nehemiah 4, 1 to 6, please. But so happened when Sambala kept that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very obedient and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stone from the heaps of rubbish stone that are burned? Now Tobiah the Hamorite was beside him. And he said, Whatever they build, even if a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own head and give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why I read that Bible passage is because I haven't said everything I've said earlier. You might still come across some obstacle. The Bible passage we read now. It said here that was said now to buy out the Amorites was near him and he said, even what they are building, if a fox jump on it, it will break down. You might be trying. Okay, we've read about spiritual, we've had about spiritual restoration. You want to start trying your best. You want to start coming. And then you might have those little bit of obstacles. Commit it to the hand of God. You might have people things like, oh, you are coming to church now. You know, what that might want to bring you down. No. Let's carry on with our decision. Let's carry on. Don't worry about obstacle. It could be anything. Obstacle could be anything. It could be, it could be anyone. But if you have that mind to work for God, don't let anything distract you. Amen. Amen. There was an adage in Yoruba that says, when you go to the market to buy something, I will say it in Yoruba, only in your Kimbo Ari Waja, and to Feba Noja, when you are going to the market to buy something, just look at who you are talking to, what you want to buy. Don't be distracted with the noise around the market. If not, you will not be able to get what you want to get. You will not be able to get that thing that you've gone to the market to get. Praise the Lord. Don't look at the noise around you. You've come to church. You've come to church to meet with God. Come to church and meet with God. Don't be distracted. Amen. My dad told us one story when we were growing up. Those um, traditional Nigerian stories. He said there was a man that wanted to get married. And there's this special pot that they use for marriage. And there's only one man that has the pot in that village. So you need to go to that man and book. You need to pre-book before another person come and get that pot. He said this particular man, he went to that man that hires the pot out. He wanted to go and hire the pot. And then when he got there, he made the man and the family eat and they are having a feast. Yes. Name it, any food you want. And he said, oh, come and join us, come and eat. And the man came and he sat down and he joined them. He was eating, they were marrying and all of that. And another man that had wedding came. And he just told the man, please, can I come and join us one minute, can I see you? And he told the man, please, I've come for that pot, I have a wedding and all of that. And, said, okay. and the man went to the backyard and gave him the pot and came back to join them. And after this, the man that came first, finished eating and everything. And he now said, what I came for was the pot. Hallelujah. He was distracted. And someone else has already come to collect the pot. And he was the one that came there early. He was the one that was there first to collect the pot. So don't be distracted. You're coming to the house of God and coming to have an encounter with God today. Don't be distracted. Amen. Amen. May we not miss our blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. 
for the revival, the prayer, the singing, and everything we've learned today. We are going to demonstrate it just for five minutes before we round up. Please, I want us to pray this three prayer points powerfully before we round up. I want us to pray for forgiveness. I want us to rise on our feet, please. I want us to tell God to forgive us for taking advantage of the position we are. The son and the children of God. Let us pray for forgiveness. Daddy, I have come cold for you. Daddy, I know I have come cold for you. Let's demonstrate that our prayer life this afternoon that we've talked about. Let us pray for forgiveness. Let us ask for forgiveness. That Father, I have spent my time, I have wasted my time on things that carry eternal value alone. Father, help me. Let's cry for help this afternoon. Let's call on our Father. Let us open our mouth. Let's cry unto God. Let us say, Father, help me, O Lord. I have gone cold for you, I know. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I need your restoration. I need that spiritual restoration. Let's begin to ask for it in the name of Jesus. Let's turn that into prayer. Let's pray powerfully, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our eternal rock of ages, our King of glory, Father, we've learned this afternoon, Father. We know we've gone cold, O Lord. Father, help us, O Lord. Revive us, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Revive us, O Lord, spiritually. Father, we want to be hot for you again. Father, we want you to revive us, O Lord, spiritually. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are going to pray. We are going to dedicate our entire spirit, soul, and body. We are going to de dedicate it again for God. Let us begin to dedicate it. Daddy, I dedicate myself unto you. I offer myself as a new living sacrifice to you. Father, I offer myself to you as a new living sacrifice. Accept me, O Lord. Father, have mercy on me, O Lord. I have wasted too much time on the things of this world. Father, help me, O Lord. Father, I dedicate myself unto you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, Daddy. Help me, eternal you again. Help me to be on fire for you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I cannot do it on my own, Lord. I need your help, O oh Lord. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. We are going to come against every distraction. Any man, any woman, anything from the pit of hell that is always distracting me from being hot for you. Father, take it away in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to be on any distraction, O oh Lord. Father, I want you to help me, O oh Lord. I don't want to be distracted again. I want to be useful for your kingdom. Help me, Daddy, in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. The second part of the revival, I talked about song, I talked about prayer to revive. The choir are going to help me here. For five minutes, we are going to sing a revival song. We want to see if we are actually ready to be revived. Present the proper revival song. Hallelujah. I know this. Let us dance to God. Let us sing to God. Let us show that we are ready to be hot for God again. We need powerful revival songs in the mighty name of Jesus. That will be the second part. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh Lord, come down and manifest Let us sing it like never before. Let us connect to heaven. Connect to heaven to us. Connect to heaven to us. Manifest your power. Oh Lord, come down and manifest your 
Yeah. 